have our race car and it's trying to move forward, right? And to move forward, it needs to push through the air. Now that concept of the air pushing back on the car and slowing the car down is known as drag. And uh, there are two basic forms of drag you can think of. You can think of pressure drag and skin friction drag. And we're gonna focus on pressure drag today. And pressure drag, one example of pressure drag at least is these front surfaces of the race car. Because when air comes along and it hits it, that directly slows the car down. This is the most intuitive form of drag. Just think of uh, uh, driving down the highway and then you stick your hand out the window. You can feel the air forcing back on your hand. You can feel that resistance. That's the pressure drag on the front of your hand. Another source of pressure drag is actually at the rear of the car. It's a much less intuitive source of pressure drag, but let's see why that happens. Imagine you're an air molecule uh, flying around here. You hit the car, going along the car, you reach the back of the car. What happens from here? Well, the, um, the ideal case is that it just keeps going along like that. Uh, this is kind of what happens if you've ever seen an airplane wing in a wind tunnel. You, uh, you have that thin shape and the air just follows the thin shape, uh, comes off of the sharp edge, and just continues moving on. We have a problem on the race car in that we do not have a sharp edge right here. We have this blunt, flat edge here. And so air wants to fill in all the space as equally as it can. So in order to fill the space behind the car equally, it would have to go along and follow the rear of the car, kind of go backwards a little bit, and then separate off of the car. Uh, this, is, this is fine at low speeds, but in NASCAR, when you're going 200 miles an hour or whatever, uh, the air doesn't have enough energy to stick to this path. The car is going so fast that the air just ends up following this random path behind it. Because air is going along here, and it doesn't have the energy to reach this area, that becomes an area of low pressure. And when you have an area of low pressure like that, surrounded by an area of high pressure, it wants to suck things towards it. And that's actually sucking the car backwards. That's slowing the car down by sucking it backwards. Uh, when I was a kid, I knew the draft was, you could see on TV, the draft was helpful for the car in front. But I never understood why, because the car in front is hitting all this air from the front, right? And the car in the back, the car in the back doesn't have to deal with that. But what I did realize is that this pressure drag on the rear of the car is very important at these speeds. And so when, an, when a car gets up right next to the bumper of the next car, that basically takes away the low pressure region. Why is that? Let me draw it a little better. But you can see the air reaches the back of the front car now, and now it doesn't have to worry about the low pressure region because the car is filling it up. It can just go on to the next car. And because there's no low pressure region to suck the front car forward, it can go faster. And that's why it helps the front car. So let's take a look at what these low pressure regions look like in real life. Are you serious? So here is the wind tunnel. My lab partners designed and 3D printed three different models. This one has a flat back and a spoiler. Uh, this one has a bumper that's curved outward like that and a little bit extended. And this one most closely resembles the actual stock cars with the scoop inwards and the extended bumper. I just want to go over to the flat model and show you how much more turbulence there is behind this model than the other ones. So uh, we have the wind speeds going from low speeds and then all the way to higher speeds. And it's, it's really visible in this run, the second run, you can see right there the air is swirling back towards the low pressure region. You can see the swirls coming off right there. And it's very messy. These streamlines up top here and at the bottom here, they don't really converge at the back so much as they do just fizzle out. I compare that to the third model. This one, I think, actually does the greatest job of getting these streamlines back to converge with each other. And you can see it has a few vortices there, but the low pressure area, the wake of the airflow, is a lot smoother than on the flat model. 
And I think that's because this angle uh, jutting out right there changes the shape of the low pressure area because air doesn't have to cut in all the way back here. This one kind of more resembles the tapered edge of the airplane wing. And that shapes the flow around it much more nicely. The second model with the curve out, uh, it's kind of in between these two because from a design standpoint it is between these two. It does have an extended bumper but just at a, oh you can't really see it on the camera very well, but just at a glance it looks like a flatter shape than the other one. And that's all there is to it, and you can see it in the airflow right there. There's vortices, it's not as bad as the flat model. It does have a nice shape to it, but at various speeds, it just doesn't work as well as this model. So I'll stop talking now, and I'll just let you look at all of these runs by themselves.